It's here. It's finally here. The brand spanking new DaveMossTuning.com. All of Dave's videos and articles in one convenient location. Click the link below and enjoy. Rear shocks. How long should they be? Well, when they come from the manufacturer's stock, most of the time they're a set length. And there's a reason for that, because the rear axle is in a set position. And plus or minus maybe five, seven millimeters, the length of that shock doesn't need to change much. So that's cool. But then we do things like stretch a chain because we ride it. And then we do things like change the gearing and we shorten the wheelbase or we lengthen it. And then we do stuff like put a bigger tire on or maybe we put a smaller tire on. So all of that directly affects the length of the shock. So how do you deal with that? If your shock is stock and if you bring your wheelbase forward, that's going to make the bike really agile. There's really no need for you to lengthen the shock in that situation at all unless you have a race bike where you're doing some serious mathematics in swing arm angle. So for the street, that's unusual. Generally, people will put a bigger tire on the rear than it came with stock. So that somewhat has a similar effect with a bigger circumference. So in this case, where we have a race bike, we need stability. So we're going to push the rear axle back. And the thing to realize there is when you push something further back, the back of the bike drops slightly. So to compensate, you can do a couple things. So let's light this up and Dave's going to come over and I'm going to light up the shock. So right up in here, we have a large piece of metal that is actually a shim. That shim could also be a packet of washers from the hardware store. And those washers combined together give you a certain thickness in millimeters. So my goal here originally with the stock shock was to give myself seven millimeters of extra ride height because my axle was quite a bit further back. So this is what I put in between the shock and the frame. So washers, piece of metal with a hole in it, or a specially engineered shim, which just means more money, is one way of doing it in increasing the length of the shock. The other way is if you buy an expensive shock, and this is a 2017 Olin shock, is that they provide you with ride height adjustability. So above the screwdriver, you can see threads. Above the threads, you can see a blue lock nut. So you unscrew or loosen that blue lock nut. And then the silver nut above it is your adjusting nut. So you can turn it away from the bike and it'll make the shock longer. Or you turn it towards the front of the motorcycle and it will make the shock shorter. So either way, I have two options here. I have a shim up top and I have ride height on the bottom. So in doing that, I have two choices. So what that helps me with is gearing. Some tracks I need set gearing where the wheelbase is going to come shorter. So I shorten the length of the shock. Other tracks are extremely fast and I need a lot of stability. So in that case, I change my gearing. I go down on the rear sprocket, which shoves the rear wheel backwards. So I need to lengthen the shock to compensate for that. Over the years with this bike, I've begun to really hone it into exactly what is perfect for each track. And in doing so, that shim at the top of the shock is a permanent fixture. Then I move my shock length up and down by positive or negative two millimeters on each track based on the lap times that I'm putting down now. And when I get faster and if the wheelbase is longer, it's more leverage on the shock. So then the inner workings of the shock have to reflect my gains in ability as well. Swing arm angle, general rule of thumb, the rear axle has to be below the swing arm pivot visually. And then you refine it from there. If you are a numbers guy, the bike has to be somewhere between 11 and 13 degrees of swing arm angle, and that means down, drop, 
with the bike in the air and the tires just touching the ground. If the bike's under its own weight, but if everything in the shock is perfect, including length, you want to look for an angle of somewhere around nine degrees. You can't do the bike under its own weight until you've absolutely got all of this perfect. You have to do it the other way. So, shortening, lengthening the wheelbase. Do you need washers between the shock and the frame or not? Can you get away with washers between the shock and the frame with a stock shock? Do you have to go to an aftermarket shock to fine tune what you need in swing arm angle? And if you do, a combination of both is wonderful. To schedule a remote tuning appointment for you and your bike with Dave via text, email, Facebook, etc., contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.